The next step in your process of building a profitable web design business is sales. We've looked at your brand and position. We've looked at marketing, how you will actually reach people out there. And in the third video, the third step, we looked at the offerings that you present to your market. Now, what all of that should have done is helped you to figure out who you are, who you're speaking to, and what message they need to hear. So you should now be reaching people who actually need what you offer. So the next step is to get them to say yes. And that's what we're going to cover today. Hopefully I'm going to really take all the fear out of the, the idea of selling. I think many of us have um, this innate fear that selling is the domain of people who've got the gift of the gab, who are kind of dominant personalities. And the bottom line is that's just not true these days. You don't need to be aggressive to be effective at sales. And I hope to prove that to you today. So let's get on with sales, the secrets to getting prospects to say yes to your web project proposals. So I'm going to start by going over the secret of selling. Let's cut straight to the chase. Now to me, selling is not distinct from marketing pretty much in any way. I know that today we're talking about the process of making a proposal and getting the yes, but that yes doesn't just come from this step, right? This is part of a, of, of a whole. If you've done good marketing, the getting the yes part will be easy. It's all actually sales. If your marketing sucks, sales will not be easy. Right? If your marketing's good, it's going to be easy. Sales starts right at the beginning of anyone's con contact with you or contact with your brand. And it also never stops. So we should always be looking for ways to sell to our existing customers. It's one of the golden rules of business. And it's one of the things that's so often overlooked. That looking at the 80-20 curve within the people who've already bought from you, there's likely to be a proportion of people who would be happy to spend more with you if you can give them something else. So it's all about just giving people what they want, what they need. Selling is not about persuasion. I'll say it again. Selling is not about persuasion, right? It's not about forcing somebody to change their mind. That is an old world view and it's just not relevant. If selling starts to become about persuasion if you start to to feel like you need to beg you need to coerce you need to bribe you're doing it wrong okay in fact more than likely the previous steps in your your marketing world aren't working in that whole ecosystem you've probably missed some steps or done some other steps wrong here's what sales actually is sales is the process of discovering with your prospect the solution that will give them what they need. Okay? You're not trying to persuade them to part with money in return for something else. This, this is all it is. If you can discover in partnership with them, so it's a collaborative process, a solution that will give them what they need, i.e. you know what their goal is, you know what it's going to take to get there, you show them what it's going to take to get there, right? And you, d you discover that with them, there is no reason why you shouldn't get the sale. Okay, and we're going to work through this now. A good sales process doesn't need a hard close point. It actually closes itself because the work has already been done. If you follow the steps that I'm going to show you today, and if you've done the previous important steps in the positioning and you know, the outreach and the offerings, right, and follow that up with what we're going to cover now, sales should just happen. And there's no persuasion required, and you don't need to have sparkly white teeth. So, now, the better you've done all of these things, the better you have understood your target market, positioned your overall proposition, which is who you are, what do you stand for, your message, your story, your goals, your vision for the world, all of that stuff, and crafted your specific offerings. So these are the, the better you've done basically the previous three steps, the less selling there will be left to do. Now, here's what a sale is. A sale is just a trade. A 
A sale is just a trade. And a trade is a very distinct thing. It's very simple and it has a simple definition. Here it is. In a trade, each party is perceives that they are getting more value for the thing that they're getting than they are giving up. If, if you go and buy something in a store, right? You go and buy a bottle of wine. Then, and you take a note out of your wallet and you buy a bottle of wine, it's because the bottle of wine is worth more to you than the note in your wallet. Okay, otherwise you'd keep, the, you'd keep the money, right? There'll be other times when there's bottle of wines on, bottles of wine on sale. You're not going to go and part with, you know, five pounds or whatever for a bottle of wine because you don't want a bottle of wine at that point. But at the point when it's time for a bottle of wine or it's time for a pizza or it's time to buy a new car, or it's time for a house, whatever it may be, time to sign up for a course, you will only hand over your money if you perceive that the thing that you're getting in return for that money is worth more to you than the money you're giving up. And it works on the other side as well. The seller perceives that what they are getting from the buyer, the, the money that they receive, is worth more to them than the thing they're giving up. And that is, at the most fundamental level, how business works. So, get this very, 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 very clear. If, you, if, if your prospect doesn't think that they are going to get more value from what you deliver than the money you are asking, they will never say yes. They don't think they're going to get more value. In other words, if they're not going to profit from this deal, they're not going to say yes. However, if they are going to profit from this deal, if they are convinced that they are going to profit, they will say yes. That's the vice versa. Now, I really, really recommend you do this. Get onto Google, search for Harry Brown, Secret of Selling Anything PDF, Click on the first link. The book is available for, for, for free online. Get hold of that. Read that. It will explain this trade thing to you. In It's one of the most elegant business books I've ever read. Very strongly recommend you get hold of a copy of that. So, let's go through Ben's stupidly simple sales system. Okay stupidly simply sales system step one you're going to ask lots of great questions right this is chatting this is an interview this is you asking somebody about the thing that they really care about which is their business okay at the same time as you're doing that you're showing them that you you're interested you care and you've you're intelligent and you've got insights and value to add but at the top line you're asking loads of great questions step two is out of that process you are going to discover and agree with the client the real goal what do they really want what are they really about then step number three is you're going to craft a proposal for how you plan to reach that goal and then you'll agree that with a client and then they'll give you some money simple as that so let's work through the what we're going to do is we're going to work through those three steps pretty quickly actually you know this is a stupidly simple sales system after all and then I'm going to just lay on you a bunch of tips, advice, and some kind of language forms that I think should come in very handy for you. You know, you can pick and choose from all that. So let's start with step one, asking loads of great questions. So what are we doing here? The goal here is to discover what really matters. Now, there's only one rule, fundamental rule in business, which is don't run out of cash. If the business runs out of cash, it can fold, it fails, right? So from there, you know, what is the business trying to do? Are they trying to um, get into a new market? Are they trying to reach more customers? Are they trying to convert more prospects into buyers? Are they trying to get more sales for each buyer? You know, it's the, uh, the fundamental um, business chassis, okay? You know, traffic converts into buyers. And then how much do they spend? And how, much, how frequently do they spend? What are the costs of the business? And all that generates the profit, which is the ultimate goal of the business. However, if somebody is looking for a specific web project, then they've got to have a goal in mind, or they should have a goal in mind. If their goal is, I want to like my website more and bored of it, then red flags there, you probably should be walking away. I'm assuming that a 
smart prospect who has discovered your brand, who has interacted and engaged with your overall proposition and your specific kind of call to action, that they're going to have a specific goal in mind and that you should be using the right bait, in other words, to get the right kind of fish. So you need to discover what really matters to them. What does that prospect truly care about? You know, so you can ask these questions like, well, you know, if that, then, what, you know, why? Why, why, why? If you achieve that, then that means what to you? And you want to keep peeling away at that onion until you get to something in the middle. Um, this is a fantastic question, right? You can, you can run your sales process off this question. What would success look like to you? And I'll say to a client quite often, six months down the line, we're sitting enjoying a cold beer and you turn to me and say, Ben, I'm so glad that, that we took that project. I know it's worked because bang, because what? What is the specific thing that points to success? If you were to measure success and you had to have an independent adjudicator to come in and say, yes, I can confirm the project is a success, What's it going to be? Something measurable. Okay, really get down to specifics. So, for example, if you got 40 new leads in the next quarter, would that be a success? And what about 30? Well, 25? 20? You know, what does success actually mean? What does success look like? Right? That's really the bottom line. And in all of this, you're probably going to have to dig through some of the business numbers. How many visitors do they get to their website, or if they have a website at all? How many leads do they get? How many sales do they get? So what's the conversion rate of visitors to leads, of leads to sales? How much profit do they get per customer? All that kind of stuff. Um, how much do they pay for their uh, pay-per-click traffic, for example, could be an important question. It's going to be a slightly different scenario for every prospect, but fundamentally, what you're trying to do is Get the picture that you need so that you can advise them on how they're going to get to their goal. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. What do you want to achieve? And let's understand where you are now. So it's kind of the, the, the start point and the goal point. And then your job is going to be to say, okay, here's how we're going to get from A to B. So step two, when you've asked all of those questions, is to discover the real goal. Now, if you've done all of that good question asking, you will know what the prospect really needs. You will know what that will be worth to them. That could be, I get to keep my job, I get to stay in business, or we're going to make an extra 25 million per quarter. Right? Whatever it is, there's going to be some kind of value to them, and don't lose sight of that. And you'll also know, of course, then, what needs to happen to get there. How are we going to get from A to B? And also, you should then know, can you help them to do it? Are you the right person to help them to do it? Do you have the skills and the, the relevant experience to do that? Of course, you can subcontract some work out to other people, and I recommend that you do. It's a good practice to get into. Right? We don't have to be an island, all of us. Right? But is it something that you care about? Is it something that you're actually interested in taking on, for example? If not, then... You know, you need to give them some good, honest advice and help them to find a different solution if you can. So next, assuming that you see a fit, you just need to agree on the real goal. OK, so agreeing on the goal is going to be something as simple as, OK, if we can increase your traffic from X to why if we can boost your conversion rates and get more leads to, up to this level okay that would be worth so and so to you is that right okay so you see what i've just done then with the you know is that is that true is that correct is that right what you're looking for is you are get you are looking for a yes you're looking for a positive response from the prospect and through the sales process it's a good idea from an NLP perspective to be getting them to say yes, 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 as often, as frequently as possible. You show that you have understood all the things that they really care about and all the steps that are required to get there. And you can repeat that all that back to them, getting them to say yes, their mind is going to be in a yes state. 
which is important, right? You want them to be in a yes state. Not that so that you can rip them off with something they don't need, but so that you can just you know, overcome everyone's natural tendency to say no. So what you may then say to them could be something like, well, let me do some research and consider my options and I'll get back to you with a proposal, okay? And the response again should be nice, yes. So out of all of this, the prospect should feel understood, he or she should feel valued, and they should trust you and your process. Okay, and that's all the, the proper expectations that they should have in their mind. What we don't want ever is a prospect to be sitting there thinking, this guy may be a jerk, but you know, I'm getting this for cheap and you know, just wait for him to shut up so that I can ask what the price is and then I'm gonna kick him around. Okay. Your prospect should be surprisingly um, engaged with you, right? They should be happy. They should be, you know, surprised that they've actually found someone who takes such an interest and shows such insight in their business and what they want that they just know they're in safe hands. So that's step two. Oh, yes, by the way, never, ever answer the question, how much does a website cost? I shouldn't have to say this at this point, but, uh, you know, there is no answer to the question, how much does a website cost? If somebody asks you that question, then you're going to try and take them through a lot of questions of yours so that you can answer it. If they don't want to go through that process, then they don't want to play your game. So say goodbye to them at that point. So here's step three of my stupidly simple sales system, crafting your proposal. So here's what a proposal should do. First, it should describe clearly exactly what you're going to do. In other words, the full scope of the work. Take time to write this stuff down. I cannot tell you, and I probably you know, wouldn't out of sheer embarrassment if, if I could remember all the times that I have cut corners when writing a proposal and then it's come back to bite me at a later date, right? If you don't say, this is what we're going to do. And also, if necessary, this is not what we're going to do. Yeah, This does not cover traffic generation. This does not cover the local SEO part, okay? Make sure that it is complete and it is unambiguous. There are no prizes ever for writing a shoddy, ambiguous proposal. You want your client to sit there going, Phew, this guy knows his game, right? You don't want their, the client to sit there thinking, yeah, there's some holes in this I'm sure I can uh, take advantage of, All right? So get the scope down, say everything that's gonna happen, everything you're gonna do, who's gonna be responsible, what you are responsible for, what you're not responsible for, what the client's responsible for, yeah, all of that needs to be in there. And as I've, I've just said, set out what will be required from the client, okay? And what their agreement to the proposal will signify, okay? So it's almost like I have read the terms and conditions and I know that if, if by signing this, I am agreeing to this payment schedule, this, you know, and, and to provide the information that you need in a timely manner, etc., etc. Now, I'll, um, I'll give you a copy of my standard uh, template that, that I've been using for several years for proposals. And I pretty much spend less than a half hour modifying that now for new clients, right? But I'll share that with you as well. It's got some, some good stuff in there. So crafting your proposal. Your proposal, if you go through all that, it should achieve these four things, right? Number one, it sex, sets their expectations that they are working with a professional and that you expect a full, two-way, transparent, committed working relationship. I can't overstress this. You don't want your client thinking you're a crack whore and they are gonna to get to call all the shots, right? If you wanna be a professional and charge professional fees, you've got to act like a professional. And this is the way that you do it. In fact, this runs all the way through the process as you'll see later as well. Your proposal should be getting them thinking big and thinking positive because you, you will re be repeating their goals. You'll be telling them how they're going to get there, right? So you want your confidence in this process to be rubbing off on them. They're, they're, they're going, wow, this is, this is good. I'm excited about this. Yeah, and actually that total price does seem like a good investment. 
it should build trust really really important and finally of course your proposal should be setting out how they are going to profit because ultimately that's what it's about all the other stuff the expectations thinking big thinking positive building trust all that's very nice but the bottom line is as we've seen this is a trade they're going to say yes if and when they see the profit in it for them if they don't see the profit they should say no so that's it guys that is the the steps of my stupidly simple sales system now what i'm going to do i'm just going to talk you through i've i've actually been through in preparing this i've gone through hundreds of emails that i've sent out to clients in my sales email folder and i've picked out some examples of language and tactics that i've used over the years in order to achieve a bunch of important things so i'm just going to talk you through that stuff and take from this what is going to work for you right if it doesn't sound right doesn't feel right reword it but do please just think about each point that we that we cover here and see how you might use this and see how maybe it might have helped you in the past as well so i'm going to start with playing hard to get so here's a uh, here's an example i like this one i'm only taking on two or three projects at a time okay now it's really tempting to to think I, i'm really desperate for this work therefore the first thing i should do is just slash my prices right that is just i mean if you think back to your teenage years right the people who were the coolest and the people who you know you maybe you fancied the most were not the the ones who seemed desperate okay it, you've got to play a little bit hard to get and that's a really good way of, of putting it. I am only taking on two or three projects at a time because of the amount of attention that I'm giving, that I give to each client. You know, this is not a high throughput shop. I'm a consultant and I give every client my full attention. How about this? If and when I take you on as a client, then blah, blah, blah. So the difference there is, you're, you're saying that if you're saying this is a two-way agreement I haven't yet agreed to take you on as a client right? if I do okay if I do then these are my expectations these are the promises that I will make to you right and I will only take you on and I will only make those guarantees and those promises to you if etc etc so all of this building trust I will never take on a project unless certain criteria are met right if i can't give you a clear return on investment within so many months then i won't take it on okay a lot of integrity in that i will only make a proposal if i'm confident i can make a significant and measurable difference to your profits your bottom line whatever it may be right so i'm not even going to make a proposal i won't even send you a proposal if i am not confident that i can do this for you Right, you can see how all that is starting to build integrity. And here's my personal favourite, which uh, I've just been using recently. I'm technically retired, so I'm literally only handpicking the the odd project that you know is absolutely perfect for me and where I where I feel that I can make a massive impact. So that's taking the I'm only taking on a few projects thing to a, another conclusion. You want to focus on investment not cost okay a trade by definition is an investment if they see web design web marketing whatever you're doing for them as a cost then that's the wrong kind of way of thinking right it, it should be profitable for them it should be a good investment for them so here's some language i would strongly advise an investment of no less than right not you're not saying to them i think you should spend this or i'm not saying here's the cost of this I'm not saying here's the price. I want to avoid negative language like cost and price. Actually, guys, just just uh, press pause for a minute on the on the, this whole flow, right? Notice how a lot of this stuff that we are covering in the sales process is very similar to uh, if you've been through the Ultimate Web Design course, for example, um, or you've studied landing page optimization, you've read Convert. A lot of this is very similar 
to writing a good sales page. Okay, the sales page is just salesmanship in the browser. Okay, so a lot of these things are the same. You want to use positive language. You want to show them positive answers to all of their positive needs. You want to resolve their negatives. Okay, their doubts and fears and concerns. You want to resolve them. You want to give them a strong call to action. Yeah, give them every reason to say yes. So, you want to use language like investment, not price, not cost. I love this. I use this a lot. Mate, if this were my business and I were investing my own money, this is what I would do. I would do that, that and that. Right? I would not do this and I would not do that because that would be wasting the money. So, you're, what you're saying to a client is, I am going to treat your money your business as though it were my own. Building on a foundation of integrity, we've already touched on a couple of examples of this, but something that, it, that can really work well is to warn clients about potentially risky alternatives. So this is just one example among many. I would steer clear of doing your own AdWords or doing your own SEO unless you get properly trained and I can show you some courses that you might like to take or whatever that will take you a couple of weeks and a thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah. So acknowledge that they have a choice, acknowledge that there are alternatives, but tell them completely transparently why you would not recommend those alternatives. Another one is um, to, uh, a great way of uh, showing integrity, which we've already touched on, is refusing to bid on unprofitable projects. So. You might say, I cannot, I cannot be confident of delivering a profitable, uh, profitable result, so I'm afraid I cannot offer a proposal for the brief. Right? If a client is basically, um, prospect is, has a brief, and you don't see how it's going to be profitable for them, right? Then how can you deliver success? Right? Success is, if if there is no goal. There is no measurable goal, or it's just not going to be worth their while to do it. So, so somebody comes along for a redesign, uh, which could cost thousands and thousands of dollars, but you don't have any reason to think why it's going to profit them to do it. Just say, say no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. Right? I think you would be wasting your money to go down this route. So I'm not even going to offer a proposal in this instance. Now... Two things can then happen. One, they could just blunder on and take a proposal from another designer who will take their money and you know, not deliver a result. Or they may be surprised and they may come back to you and ask you some questions and you can take it from there. Setting price expectations. This is really, really important. Without this minimum level of investment, I would not take on the project because I could not be sure of a return. Right. So that's the kind of the semi version of the one that we just looked at where we said I'm not taking this on if I can't deliver you a profit right what this is saying is if you're gonna spend less than five thousand then I'm sorry I can't help because I think you'd be wasting your money and you know, everyone in business knows that sometimes you have to invest a certain amount in order to get a certain result and you don't want to uh, spoil the ship for a hapeth of tar is the expression which means that you know by scrimping on just a little bit of waterproofing, you could lose something big. How about this? With the investment that I recommend in thing A and thing B that you want to do, you should expect a minimum increase in conversions or sales or whatever it is of so many percent. A cheaper option might be to blah, blah, blah. Right? So this is the same tactic as we've just looked at. Is acknowledge that there are alternatives, but tell them in a very transparent way why you don't think it would be viable. Okay, but so you can say, look, there are cheaper options, but this one would probably be less profitable in the medium and long term. But you could still do it if you want to. And we've got a variation on that one coming up as well. How about discounting without discounting? If you really need to bend over backwards to secure a particular client, okay, don't say, I will discount my fees, I'll, I will halve my rate. Okay? Give them a reason. Trade with them for that discount. If you would be happy for me to use this project as a case study and to provide an in-depth interview and you know, with the permissions to use it and all that, I will be able to offer, in this case, a percent reduction. Okay? Really important. You are saying to them, I can offer you a 20% 
reduction in in the overall fee okay but that is acknowledging the overall fee and the the that that top level price is the value of the project okay you should never just say this never just offer a cheap price because that's saying the value is less much better to say actually it's going to be 20,000 but I'm reducing it to 12 right because then they think oh wow I'm getting a bargain here so always let them know what any discount is actually worth here's another one I would propose an investment of so and so this will enable me to carry out these critical steps A and B and C which are essential for success I could remove A or B from the proposal but if I did that I could not then provide my guarantee that blah 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 in other words that's just another way of saying these are the things that are critical right if you could remove that one or that one but if you do I can't guarantee you're gonna make your money okay again it's integrity again it's transparent again it should be building trust here's a nice one this is uh, something I've used several times you might call it the pre-project report tactic so here's what you could say in order to so let's say this is the kind of uh, situation where it's gonna take you a bit of working out to know um, where the profits gonna come from so you might need to do some keyword research you might need to do some AdWords analysis right you might need to do some in-depth competitive analysis right? whatever it is that you need to know in order to be able to give them a clear uh, recommendation and proposal this is kind of the getting them to pay for the proposal tactic okay in order to know whatever it is I need to do some in-depth research and analysis now because of the time involved this will carry a fee but you'll be free to use the insights and intelligence I'll deliver to you in any way you like even if you choose not to do any more work with me at this time so that's saying look I'll give you this report it's gonna be valuable you can then take it off you can do it in-house you can hire somebody else to do it or whatever okay so it's saying look I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hard to get I, I'm not desperate for this work I need to do this for you you need to pay me for it right but plus if you accept my proposal which will which I'll deliver along with the the research I will discount hundred percent of the fee from the research because I will already have done most of the groundwork now this is a tactic that I used several times in order to secure projects when I think um, clients were paying like three hundred dollars for me just to do what I was calling a webmaster report this is several years ago so I'd look at their website I come up with some recommendations I say well here's how it's working here's how it's not working you need to do more of this and more of that and more of the other now you can give a client those recommendations because if they can do that stuff themselves they probably would have been doing it themselves or at least trying to do it but and then I'll say look I'll make you a proposal I will do this work for you for five thousand dollars but I'll, but I'll discount then the 299 you've already paid me for the report so it's only four seven okay so they think are getting a deal they think that if they pass that up they'll be losing some money give your reasons for everything there's some quite powerful copywriting tips in these words okay here's one so that we'll do this do this so that I can give you whatever so that we will know whatever right so that just very very important couple of words a flip side of that one is because it's just a way of rearranging the same kind of sentence because it's critical to know this before you proceed okay we have to do that okay so you've got so that you've got because I actually had these phrases written on my wall for quite a while here's another one is the the which means that We'll do that we'll do that we'll do that which means that we will know this right they're all actually just different ways of logically different ways of looking at the same structure and here finally that's how I will do this for you and which means that we'll understand that and that's how I will be able to promise you or guarantee you so and so so what all of these things are saying is that without something something else won't work 
So spend some time. Write these things down. All right, print it out, whatever you want to do, and and just get them into your bloodstream. Examples of wetting the prospect's appetite. And what we want to do is actually wet their appetite. Okay, we want to flash them a bit of leg. Okay, we want to get their heart rate going, but we can't. We we need to do it without giving away everything. Okay, so it's a twist on playing hard to get. It's clear to me that there are definite opportunities to increase traffic and conversion and profits significantly with your website, right? You're not telling them what they are. You're telling them that you know what they are. And whatever you're doing, back up all claims with examples of how you've achieved something similar in the past, wherever you can do it. And if you haven't done it, right, borrow somebody else's case study. Just give them an example of how this was done. For example, when this company made these kinds of changes, they found a boost of something else. It doesn't mean you've done the work, but it means that you've understand how, you understand how it was done. Another little uh, tactic you may use is subtle dissuasion. We've already kind of covered this by saying yes in transparency, saying you've got options, but I wouldn't recommend that option because... So here's one. In my experience... The right approach is whatever it is. You could go with the cheaper alternative, right? But, and then explain to them why it would be unprofitable or risky to do so. Now, this will apply for competitors as well as options within their project, okay? So you say, look, you could go with a an off-the-shelf WordPress solution for this, right? There are plugins that would do it, but... So what you're doing here is in sales terms you're leaving landmines for your competition and that doesn't just mean other web designers or other marketing professionals out there but you know um, inaction is a is a competitor not doing anything is a competitor so in my experience you need to keep on top of this now you could choose to do nothing at this point however if you do then these are the likely consequences right see how it works so there's lots of different alternatives out there to what you're proposing cover them off if you can and just a little tip here when you're talking to clients whether it's verbally or in written form try to use positive presumptive language what is presumptive language well here's an example here's what I'll do for you now if this the, nobody signed anything at this point right no money has changed hands no promises have been given no handshakes have been shaken but what you're doing is you're saying that you're just talking about something as though it is a certainty. That's what I mean by presumptive language. This is an NLP technique. Okay, Here's what I will do for you. Not if you sign me up, then I can do this. No, here's what I will do for you. Right? You feel the confidence coming right from the, the middle of the stomach there. Here's another one. When I start work on your site, or when I... Dun, dun, dun. When I take on your project, when I represent, when I blah blah blah, right? Not if I, not if you, not if you pretty please, sir. If you don't mind, sir, terribly, sir, right? When I do this, this is what's going to happen. That's the certainty. That's positive, powerful, presumptive language at work. So, quick summary, maybe not such a quick summary. Okay, selling is a simple process of establishing the grounds for a trade. If something is going to be, you just have to show that what you're offering them is worth more to them than the money you're asking for. If you can do that, and obviously the money's worth more to you than the time you put in, hopefully, otherwise you're not charging enough. If you can do that, they will say yes. Why wouldn't they say yes? And you've already gone over the alternatives and shown them why the alternatives are less preferable. Discovering if you are right for your prospect is a two-way process, right? This is like, imagine it's like going on a date. This is a dinner date, right? You are both finding out about each other. It's not a question of are they right for you or are you right for them? Both things have to be right. Do you fit? Do you have mutual respect? Can you communicate, right? It's a two-way process. And remember, there is no hard in sell. And if you're ever in doubt, imagine that you are chatting to a friend 
about some kind of product that you love. It might be a book you've read, it might be your um, smartphone that you use, it might be a movie that you've been to, it might be a recipe, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay? Just imagine you've bumped into your friend or you're at a party and you know they say, Oh, mate, how you know, how do you like your phone? And you say, Oh, this is brilliant because and let me tell you about it. It lets me do this. Right? Before I couldn't do that, and now I can do this. And this is the impact that it's had on my life. Now, I don't know if you do this, but if you do, you'll find that this, this phone could help you um you know, do something in a different way. And this is what it would mean to you. Now, you might be concerned that, yeah, it's more expensive than that other phone, but I find that, blah, 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 blah. Right, you see what you're doing? Tell them why you love this thing, what's so great about it, why it's worth it, why you might have had doubts about it, or, and then help to dispel those doubts and fears and concerns, right? Some people say the battery life isn't so good, but I find that, you know, whatever, there are ways around. So that's what selling's like. If you're selling a movie to a friend, if you're selling a recipe to a friend, that's all it is. Right? And selling is human. There's a book by Daniel H. Pink, To Sell is Human. If you suffer from big fear of selling, get hold of that book as well. Right? But don't worry about selling, because it isn't like that. If the client is right, and the client needs your special skills, and they are willing to play by your rules, and you can establish a profitable trade, you will get the yes. And I'll just leave you with that.